My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist in secondary care. So today I'm going to go through a video which is highly requested. I'm going to go through a video of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis in my role as a hospital pharmacist. So as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, I specialise in the antimicrobial field which involves anything to do with antibiotics, antifungals and antivirals. So this is particularly important because this means that my role might be different to other hospital pharmacists that are out there, but it is such an interesting role and I thought it would make an interesting video. Currently I work in the United Kingdom and I've been specializing for three years and what that means is my focus is in a particular therapeutic area. So you could specialize in the cardiorespiratory system, which involves the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. You could specialize in infectious diseases or antimicrobials, which is what I do. Or you could specialize in something, for example, like diabetes. I'll take you through what I'll be doing within my role from 8.30 a.m all the way to 5 p.m. So I would start my day at 8.30 a.m. and I'm going to go through a clinic day with you. A clinic day is quite interesting because it will mean I'm seeing patients in a clinic setting face to face. And this is something that is fairly new to the role of a clinical pharmacist in a hospital. At 8.30 a.m. I start by preparing my notes for the patients that I'm going to see in the afternoon. This gives me a good idea of what's happening with regards to the patient's blood tests, what's happening with regards to the patient's microbiology results. So sometimes we will take a swab from the area and send that to the lab. These patients in particular that I'm seeing this afternoon are patients with a diabetic foot infection. So what you could do is you could take a swab from the particular area or you could take some tissue from that particular area and you can test it in a microbiology lab to see what's growing in that diabetic foot ulcer. So this is very interesting because I can take a look at what we're treating the patient with currently in terms of the antibiotics and see if it's still effective for that particular infection. Taking a look at the bloods beforehand really gives me an idea of the patients I'm going to see, what I'm expecting to do, and gives me a rough outline of the entire clinic. Once I've completed looking at these patients' blood test results and looking at the microbiology results, I then look at the prescriptions for these patients and see if there's any patient prescriptions that I need to extend. I extend these prescriptions and I can prescribe these prescriptions because I'm an independent prescriber within the United Kingdom. So some pharmacists can be prescribers if they do a particular course, which allows them to legally prescribe a large majority of the medications that we use in the United Kingdom. So if there are any patients that I need to extend the prescription for, I will then do so at this particular time, right up until 11 a.m., where we have a meeting which is called the Diabetic Foot Infection MDT. MDT stands for Multidisciplinary Team. The purpose of this MDT meeting is for you to meet with other healthcare professionals and discuss complex patients that you see in the Diabetic Foot Infection Clinic. So it's a great opportunity for me to raise complex patients with the consultant endocrinologist. So this is the consultant that will specialize and oversee the care of these patients with diabetic foot infections as well as the consultant microbiologist. The consultant microbiologist would be a specialist in microbiology and will have a great understanding of what to do with these particular infections. So it's a great opportunity to discuss these complex cases. And then we're also joined by the specialist podiatrists that have a great understanding of a diabetic foot infection and the healing process, as well as the outpatient nursing teams so the question is, why do we have outpatient nursing teams here? And that's because the large majority of our patients are actually managed at home. And this is quite interesting because if you don't have a good understanding of what happens uh, within a hospital, you wouldn't understand the fact that there's many patients that we actually treat with diabetic foot infections with intravenous antibiotics, but they're actually treated at home. And this is because they can safely be discharged home and the only reason that they are in hospital is to have their intravenous antibiotics. So we can, if we can safely facilitate this at their home environment, this is what we can do with these particular patients. And we'll invite the outpatient nursing teams to these meetings to discuss our management plans going ahead. This meeting will usually take about an hour and we'll go right up until lunchtime, which is about 12 to 12.30. And then I'll go grab a bite to eat, 
before the clinic begins. The clinic starts around one o'clock, so that's 1 p.m., and we normally see about six to eight patients within the afternoon. So let's speak about my role within this clinic. So I will have a good understanding of the patient's blood test results. I'll have a good understanding of the medications that they're taking, which will usually be prescribed by myself, and I will see if it's safe to continue those medications for this patient. So I'll be taking a look at a lot of factors. Mainly I'll be taking a look at the patient's kidney function, I'd be taking a look at the patient's liver function, I'd be taking a look at inflammatory markers that will tell me if the antibiotics that we're using are working the way we want them to. And then I can also take a look at the microbiology results. I can look at the bugs that we're growing in that particular area, I can see if the antibiotics that we're using are still effective, and I have to take a look at what we're going to do going ahead. The duration of antibiotics, so how long we're treating this patient for, is very important because we don't want to treat these patients for longer than we need to because of the risk of antibiotic resistance. We don't want to treat these patients for less than we need to because of the fact that treatment failure can make the condition worse. So it's really a balancing act, trying to perfect the amount of antibiotics that you're giving to these patients. And this can depend on many factors. It can depend on how the patient's getting along uh, with their treatment in terms of patient response. It can depend on whether or not the infection is only impacting the tissue and the skin and it's not impacting the bone. If it is impacting the bone, we have to go for a longer duration of time. And then I will see whether or not we should continue the patient's antibiotics, whether or not it's time to stop the antibiotics, whether or not I need to refer them to another specialist in another area and I need to see what the plans are with regards to whether or not the patient has any surgery due for their diabetic foot infection. So this will take me right up until about 5 to 5.30 p.m. Within this period of time, I would have created management plans for these six to eight patients. And we will generally see these patients either every week if they need close monitoring or every two weeks if they don't need close monitoring. Bearing in mind that we have outpatient nursing teams seeing them every day to keep us up to date with their particular management plan and how they're getting on. So this is a short uh, summary of a day as an antimicrobial pharmacist working in a hospital setting. If you have any questions or anything else that you want me to explore and provide details on, then let me know in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.